Hi there, CNCF community. Today we're going to be talking about a very interesting subject that is near and dear to my heart. We're going to be talking about open telemetry, distributed tracing, observability, and event driven architecture overall. My name is Tamimi. I'm a developer advocate at Solace, and I'm involved with all things developer enablement from our Solace community uh, forum to all the uh, demos and videos that uh, you guys are uh, seeing uh, right now. And I'm Rob Tompkins. I'm a senior principal core product manager here at Solace. And so I've been delivering solutions to customers from financial transactions to uh, transportation to retail over the last three years and having a blast doing it with the event-driven architecture. Fantastic. Um, let's go ahead and kickstart this with uh, open telemetry and uh, in, uh, in general, what uh, open telemetry is all about. So Rob, can you please tell me a little bit about open telemetry, how it fits within uh, CNCF and uh, the overall open uh, telemetry or what we're gonna be uh, calling OTEL throughout the video. How does it fit within uh, CNCF? So uh, Open Telemetry or OTEL is the second largest project within CNCF. There's mm -hmm. a lot of great interest in it because what Open Telemetry really lets you do is provide you a way to normalize your uh, tracing and telemetry information into a standards package mm -hmm. that can be distributed to pretty much any observability tool out there. And you know, observability has been around for many, many years at this point. And uh, it just continues to grow and is becoming an integral part of most enterprises' infrastructures. And uh, as we know, observability has uh, three main pillars uh, to it. We've got the traces, logs, and, metri and metrics within uh, observability. And uh, we will be talking more about uh, traces and in particular, uh, distributed uh, tracing. As Rob has mentioned, OTEL has a very big open source uh, community uh, behind it that uh, supports it. And we will be referring to this uh, open source uh, community throughout the uh, content. So um, let's up a little bit more into kind of uh, event driven architecture and you know what event driven architecture is all about and how we can blend in these two worlds between open telemetry and event driven architecture and what are the advantages for all these factors. So we'll start with uh, event driven architecture in, in general. Right. So event-driven architecture is a very hot topic. It was huge at AWS reInvent, you know, core to um, cloud-native capabilities. And uh, really, it's about uh, decoupling your applications and your uh, APIs and letting any type of application or service talk to any other type of application over a uh, constant um, messaging infrastructure and to do that in an asynchronous manner or based on events, uh, thus event-driven architecture. And really it's built around a mesh of brokers and we deploy brokers in the uh, event-driven architecture to move messages along uh, to, their, to their target de destinations. And there are many, many different types of attributes and use cases for this kind of technology. So, for example, uh, you, you could use the event-driven architecture for analytics. And this is very commonly uh, done today to communicate uh, different types of information between different services to analyze your business information and provide guidance going forward or make recommendations or do uh, security checks and look for security vulnerabilities are all kind of done in sort of an analytical um, event-driven architecture. There's also uh, a, uh, an operational use case around event-driven architectures where you're trying to combine the many, many different components within your uh, enterprise so that they all work in unison, no matter what protocol, no matter what IPaaS, what cloud native service, uh, what um, API you're choosing to use, it all can work and talk to each other over top of an event driven architecture. And in these cases, sometimes you're doing it, you're using the event driven architecture for uh, very low latency and you're doing direct messaging. Other times you're really looking to get persistence and uh, have messages stored by the event-driven architecture such that uh, they uh, persist beyond when uh, you know, a consumer goes up or down 
it's they're waiting for that consumer when it returns. Thanks, uh, thanks, Rob, uh, for this uh, overview on event driven architecture. And you know, as as you mentioned uh, earlier, one of the uh, speed advantages of uh, event driven architecture is you can connect uh, different microservices and different applications within your system. Whether you're having uh, legacy uh, mainframes or legacy infrastructure in your system, or you have IoT devices, you have microservices that are communicating with different protocols, different APIs, so there's different languages as well that is involved in an event-driven architecture. So truly, when you think of an event-driven architecture from an enterprise uh, level, or even kind of like a real-world use cases, it is pretty complicated. There's a lot of like complicated things, there's a lot of moving parts uh, in there, which which means that the underlying messaging system and the messaging infrastructure that is you, that you're using to power your event-driven architecture should take into account this variability in your system, where it should support the uh, variability in protocols, messaging protocols, APIs, languages, and all the different kind of ways you can connect uh, things in your event-driven uh, architecture. So um, when, when someone needs to kind of implement and deploy uh, an event-driven architecture, those are the, the factors that you gotta take into account is how do you work with all these different uh, variabilities? You did mention as well the concept of um, cloud a native uh, solution. So this is also another thing you got to take into account is if you want to adopt an event driven architecture strategy in your uh, system, you got to ask yourself questions like, how do we make sure that my on cloud and on ground uh, data communicate with each other? You have different form factors. Uh, if you have, for example, uh, data residency requirements and the data needs to be in a particular um, country or region, how do you make sure that there's cross-region communication? And this is where the concept of an event mesh comes in, where Rob uh, mentioned earlier, which is a network of interconnected message brokers uh, together. All right, so this is great. Uh, we talked a lot about uh, event-driven architecture and open telemetry. Now let's try to kind of say, you know, we, we mentioned previously the, the importance of open telemetry, the importance of uh, observability and how, uh, you know, if you have an observability strategy in your, um, uh, in, your, in, in your system, then you're already ahead of the game by at least collecting as much information as you want. But now if you have an event-driven architecture and you want to deploy a, a distributed tracing uh, strategy into your event-driven architecture, uh, there's so many things that you got to take into account and it's a pretty challenging uh, thing to, to approach. So before we delve into you know, the, the solutions to these kind of things, let's first talk about why is it hard to observe an event-driven architecture? What are the challenges behind implementing and introducing observability in an event-driven architecture? Right, so you know, the, the challenges around uh, observability and event-driven architecture are really around it, its base nature. I mean, you're, you're talking disparate protocols, different uh, microservices, different mm -hmm. cloud services, each one providing their own formats, their own uh, ways of communicating. You're doing that in an asynchronous manner. It's going into an event mesh and you don't know, you know, how many times that message is being delivered to different consumers. You don't know, uh, you know, exactly which broker is going to be delivering that message. Um, uh, particularly when you're looking at something global, like we're talking about mm -hmm. going from Asia to North America, you're, you're going to cross a couple of brokers. Uh, you don't, uh, you don't know, um, uh, you know, if, if that message didn't get delivered, was it dropped by the consuming application, mm -hmm. uh, so it actually was delivered, or whether something happened in the middle of the infrastructure, say your time to live expired, or uh, you know a, a number of retries expi uh, went through and uh, it was declared undeliverable. Mm -hmm. it, it can be very difficult to diagnose exactly what happened in that black box that is the event mesh today. And I, I think this is what's so exciting about taking open telemetry and combining it with messaging so that you can really understand not just the application layer, but what's happening in the messaging underneath it. What happened to that message that went from this application to all these other applications? And, and you know, even what was the, the latency and the mm -hmm. timing when that was resolved? Yeah. 
Yeah, and you know, Rob, when I when I think of distributed tracing and observability and collecting it from a system, I think of it from three different levels. Mm -hmm. First, we've got the application layer where your application microservices could generate scans and tracing information from within the application when there's kind of like logic interactions. Right. There's also on the API level, so when there's different microservices that are interacting with other different services or different microservices, different servers, and on the API level, you are uh, generating scans. Mm -hmm. And then there's the broker layer. So these are the three layers. You've got the application, API, and the broker layer. So it is extremely critical to understand what is happening within the messaging piece of your system, so within the broker. Things like, you know, if the message wasn't in a queue or it wasn't in a queue, did the message fail within the broker or uh, like things that you mentioned earlier from the consuming or the producing end. So it is extremely critical and valuable to generate this kind of information and these kind of scans from within the uh, broker. All right, so we, we talked about um, kind of the, the importance of having observability in your uh, EDA system. Why is it uh, important? And, uh, you know, I, I do want to give a shout out to the open telemetry community in general for all the work that they do from an open source uh, perspective. And one of the open source initiatives that the open telemetry uh, community has is the open telemetry collectible, the OTEL uh, collectible, which is, um, you know, something that is extremely powerful since it's backed by open source and by the community. Uh, so, Rob, a question for you. If I do have a, uh, a message broker and mm -hmm. I would like to enable it for generating distributed tracing information in my uh, system, what is the approach that I need to take considering open telemetry collector and to, to have this support for observability in my EDA infrastructure? Right, so that, that's, a, that's a great question. What you need to be able to do is you need to be able to try, tie that messaging infrastructure in with the application infrastructure. And you do that, as you were saying, at the API layer. Mm -hmm. So here what we do is context propagation, which is a capability that is provided by OpenTelemetry and allows us to propagate information from one layer to the next. And basically what we do is take that information like trace ID, there could be baggage, and other context and put it into the event itself. So mm -hmm. it's being carried along with the mess with the message as it goes through the data path and it gets modified at each span along the way that's generated and and so each broker generates spans as the message uh, passes through it uh, usually multiple spans so for example you might have a receive span that it records when the message was re received and then how long it took before it was enqueued and it could be enqueued in many different queues within that broker. And then from the uh, from uh, that point, you could generate a send span for every single one of those messages that's enqueued. And it, the send span will tell you, you know, uh, when that message was sent to the consumer and what response was received, how long it took to get receive that response, so that you can track, you know, that delivery and understand whether it was successful or not, why it failed, if it failed, and the timing um, resulting from all of that. Okay. And those spans are uh, collected by the broker mm -hmm. and packaged up into messages that get sent into the open telemetry collector that you mentioned. And in the open telemetry collector, you've got um, the ability to feed in uh, open telemetry protocol, but you also have the ability to embed receivers. And a receiver will take you know, any proprietary protocol and convert it into open telemetry. It does uh, processing of that. It'll do filtering if you want it to do that. And then uh, hands it off to exporters, either through o OLTP or an embedded exporter for whatever observability tool the customer has chosen. And there's such a wide variety of those mm -hmm. um, that the collector is really a key attribute of, of a distributed tracing system because it enables kind of any a destination from an observability standpoint. Right. And the open telemetry community has worked so hard in standardizing this process and making sure that there is a standard that is followed in the industry for uh, traces and as it goes through. And the advantages for this right now is, you know, regardless of what observability backend you have, whether it's Jaeger, Datadog, Dynatrace, to name just a few, and we're just scratching the surface here, is 
you can take all these traces that is generated by the open telemetry collector and stitch them in the way that you want within your observability uh, backend and that way you can have again a standard way to processing these traces that are generated from the open telemetry collector all right, well, this is uh, great from, you know, being able to uh, do uh, distributed tracing in an event-driven architecture. So let's assume right now I am an organization and I am way ahead of the game. I, I know that it is important to have an observability strategy in my system. I know that I need to use an event-driven architecture strategy as well uh, for my uh, solutions. What are the advantages of having a uh, distributed tracing supported uh, event-driven architecture that I have? What benefits would I get uh, from investing in enabling my EDA with distributed tracing? So there are really four major benefits. Mm -hmm. uh, so first of all is debugging, which is kind of the core use case of, of tracing, uh, which allows you to uh, debug your, your application when you're building it in a dev environment and understand exactly how that message flows. Is it flowing exactly the way you design the application to and, and to validate that? On the flip side, you can take that same capability into operations and do troubleshooting. When something's going wrong, you can look at your traces and understand, okay, this is what was going on with that application. These messages were going to where they were intended or there was something wrong there and, and to figure that whole thing out. Third is the ability to monitor and optimize. So this allows you to step back and look at your event mesh and understand what's happening with your event mesh how long is it taking to get to different places in your event mesh, mm -hmm. even optimize things like your topics within your event mesh. If the same messages are on different topics, but going to the same destinations, you can combine that and, and simplify things, for example, or maybe you want greater granularity. And so you build out your, your, your topics um, that way. And finally, last but not least, uh, we've got data lineage, which in this context really boils down to proof of delivery so you know can you tell the application uh, uh, developer what really happened with that message and guarantee that a particular message got all the way to the end what happened to an individual message uh, you know it's really proof of uh, of innocence and 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 how how fast can you demonstrate to uh, the application team that the event mesh is working right or get to um, an understanding of you know what really went wrong and and uh, how to fix that this all is uh, is great uh, input thanks uh, rob uh, for this and what i really think would make this come to life uh, even more and have it more exciting is a demo so um, another thing that I really like about the open telemetry community is apart from standardizing things, working so hard from an open source uh, perspective, they have developed this uh, OTEL uh, demo, which is a very interesting and neat uh, demo uh, that is that has pretty sophisticated uh, uh, moving parts uh, in there. And you can check it out by going to the open telemetry's uh, website and checking out the uh, demo. This demo is uh, basically an uh, e-commerce uh, application that has different moving parts between a front end, back end, accounting services, fraud detection, all the different kind of uh, moving parts within an e-commerce system to kind of reflect what a real use case of an application could be. And they added on top of that distributed tracing through all the different moving parts so you can see the context being propagated of a message or an event that is happening in your system uh, throughout the different moving parts. What has been added as well to this uh, demo is a messaging piece and that messaging piece is being demonstrated by having a kafka broker uh in the in the mix what we did here at uh, solace is we've taken that uh, demo uh, it is open source on a github repo uh, we've forked it and we've added a solace component to it so now you can run kafka and solace hand in hand doing the uh, same activity and through this uh, demo, you can publish messages to your Ka Kafka broker and to your Solace uh, broker. And you can see all the extra details that we were talking about what happens within the message broker. So instead of seeing the broker as a black box in your system of a message going in and a message going out, you can even delve more and do like surgery within your uh, uh, message broker and kind of see what queue did the message go to? What happens within the broker? Uh, did it send it to the uh, final kind of uh, consumer or not? So it really adds more light 
uh, and color to your EDA component of your overall uh, system. So um, stay tuned, I will we'll show you where you can uh, take a look at uh, this demo so you can run it uh, on your own uh, local machines and play around with uh, event-driven architecture and uh, distributed uh, tracing. So that's, uh, that's what we have uh, for you folks for uh, today. We hope this was uh, pretty informative. We did talk about open telemetry, distributed tracing, event-driven architecture, and how we can implement distributed tracing within event-driven architecture. And lastly, the demo piece that is available to bring all this uh, to light. So uh, thank you again for uh, listening, Rob. Thank you very much for all the content and information that you uh, you provided. I think that was uh, pretty pretty informative and uh, interesting. Thank you, Tamimi, and thank you for all your work on the the, the demo from a Solo standpoint. You're very valuable. We're looking forward to seeing, you know, how we can continue to evolve that to mm -hmm. so many different uh, components and protocols. It really fits very well with event-driven architecture. And right. I'm sure this is the first step. In yeah, we're just scratching the surface. Exactly. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank, thank you. All. you.